What's going on, everybody? Thanks for listening to iOS Dev Discussions. It's another episode of what I'm working on. This is the show where I talk about uh, <laughs> what I'm working on uh, as a iOS content creator, YouTuber, indie developer, whatever, right? I talk about all aspects of the business, right? From content creation, sponsors, uh, consulting, and my indie app creator view. And in this episode, two little bonus topics. I'm gonna address some feedback from the last episode because that was the first one uh, that was filmed and on YouTube. Normally it's just on my podcast. Uh, this is the second one that's being filmed. And then I'll give an update on the, uh, the job hunt if you will. I wasn't really hunting that hard. Uh, but the verdict on where I'm at with like the whole job stuff. We'll do that at the end because the talking about the business, it will be pretty short this episode. So first let's talk about the feedback uh, from the video. Cause again, it was my first time doing video. I didn't know if people would like it, people would hate it, like whatever. But two interesting pieces is that I discovered that a lot of people didn't even know I had a podcast. Like many of the comments were like, yeah, definitely keep doing the video. I, I, I don't like podcasts. I'm not a podcast person. So I didn't even know you had one. So that's incentive to keep doing the videos. Uh, and then w another key piece of feedback was uh, if I do the video podcast, because a big benefit of doing the video is that I can put visuals up on the screen, right? To illustrate what I'm talking about. Whereas I can't do that in a podcast, obviously. So the piece of feedback was not to rely too heavily on the visuals when I'm explaining something, because again, the podcast people can't see those. So I'm gonna do my best uh, to keep those in mind. But a lot of people also liked having the option. Hey, sometimes I wanna watch, sometimes I just wanna listen. So long story short, I think we're gonna keep up the, uh, the video version as well. So let's kick things off with the content creation business. And a big part of my business is creating courses, right? My, my business model is not rocket science, right? I pump out a lot of videos, that's marketing for my courses, right? People like my teaching style, they like me for whatever reason and they want to learn more so they go to the courses right not again not not rocket science so uh, i want to give an update on the next course i'm working on I, I touched on this last week and it was a cloud kit map kit swift ui app uh, i was calling it wwdc eats where basically you can find restaurants people checked in there at WWDC around the convention center in San Jose. Uh, shout out to Scott Smith, who gave me the, uh, the brilliant title. He just, he just DM'd me, Dub Dub Grub. <laughs> no, no explanation, but I knew what he was talking about. And I was like, oh, that's perfect. I was like, I'm stealing that. And he's like, yeah, yeah, do it. So shout out to Scott Smith, uh, another YouTuber who basically gave me Dub Dub Grub, the name. So that's what we're going with. So I'm throwing up some screenshots on the uh, screen right now. I'm gonna do my best to describe them. But I also wanna talk about my process and why these aren't necessarily like final screenshots, even though they look you know, pretty well put together. So whenever I'm coming up with uh, an idea for one of these courses, like yeah, I have the general idea for what features will be, but then I go to my iPad and just sketch them out with you know pen and paper, well, iPad, pen and paper, but uh, you know, super rudimentary sketches, no color, just chicken scratch drawings essentially. Once I have like the skeleton, uh, if you will, of that, then I come into sketch, which is what you're seeing now. And I kind of just flesh out the screens a little bit. However, these aren't final screens and I don't just build to this design spec. Uh, I just give myself the liberty, you know, when I'm building it to just change things. Cause I'm sure, you know, you've been there too. As you build things, you get different ideas or, or maybe something doesn't quite work the way you thought it was gonna work. So uh, again, these screens are just a more fleshed out uh, version of um, you know, my chicken scratch. It may, it probably will look different in like the final product, but I just wanted to give you like my design, you know, process when I come up with this stuff. So let's actually run through some of the screens. Top left screen here. Uh, and again, I'm describing it for those in the uh, audio podcast, but uh, more explanation for the video can't hurt either. So this is just a typical map, right? You see all the annotations on the map that represents all the different eateries or bars or whatever around San Jose. And it's gonna have the, the map kit, typical stuff, right? Annotations, call outs, uh, user location. With core location, you're gonna be able to, you know, get directions to a restaurant. Where, as you can see, we're gonna draw the line on the map to that restaurant. So again, just the, the typical map kit stuff this is like the, the map kit section of the tutorial obviously or of course not just the tutorial and then you see this bottom card that has uh you know like an image the name of the restaurant scott seafood and then a a horizontal stack view of uh, all the little avatar images so you can see who's checked in because that's the whole idea right developers at wwdc like if i'm at scott seafoods i can be like hey sean allen checked in at scott seafood and all the other developers on the app can see hey sean's at scott's let's go to scott's you know because i'm sure my milkshake will bring everybody to the yard but anyway you can tap on uh, Scott Seafood and it'll go to the detail screen, which you see in the middle, which again, for those on the podcast, pretty typical detail screen, right? You got the, an image of the restaurant. You got a little blurb about what it does. 
You can tap a button to get directions, go to their website, you know, to see their menu. You can tap the phone icon to, to call them up real quick. You have the ability to check in here. And then the bottom half of the screen is just uh, like a clubhouse UI of just all the avatars of like, who's here? Like who's at this, who's at Scott Seafood right now? And you can see maybe it's 50 developers, maybe it's three developers, but it's just a, a grid or a collection view of all the avatars. And then you can tap on that avatar to pull up a little profile uh, modal of them, right? When it has their first name, last name, where they work and a short little bio. And then there's another screen that is just a, a list view of all the uh, restaurants. So you can obviously search by the map or you can just go to another tab at the bottom that has just all the restaurants listed out. Uh, and that has their typical details, right? Image, name, and all the avatars. It's basically the same uh, cell as it's on the card on the home screen. And then you have the profile image where you can edit and upload your own picture. Uh, you know, typical profile information. But again, the premise here is that CloudKit is going to kind of back everything. So you're going to get experience with CloudKit and then the typical map kit uh, tutorial of kind of like what we just talked about before, all wrapped up in a Swift UI little package here. And I want to talk about that package because as I was like even sketching this out or I'm starting to build it, I get all these ideas on like where this can go. Like for example, uh, you know, you saw the list view of the restaurants. Well, why can't you have like a friends list where, you know, you can be friends with other developers. That way you can just go to your friends list. Hey, where's Sean at? Okay, there's Sean, let's go. Rather than like trying to find it through all the various restaurants. But again, I have to draw the line somewhere because so much feedback I've gotten from, from you know, courses and stuff is that like sometimes they can just be too long and a lot of courses like advertise that as like a feature like over 80 hours of content and I'm this way too I'm like that's just way too much like I'm gonna lose interest it's gonna take forever to go through uh so I try to keep my courses very like uh attainable and achievable to do in like a relatively reasonable amount of time uh so I don't go too far so like that's what I'm saying some of these features like the friends list I may not do but I'm going to mention them not only here but in the uh in the course because so yes it is like a reasonable sized course but i'm going to give you all kinds of ideas that hopefully you can use this just as a basis to maybe you can take it as a challenge on your own to build you know friend requests and, and friends list type feature or some of the other features i thought of because again if i go down all those threads it's just way too long of a course people don't finish it and not only that it's a hell of a lot more work and i'm probably gonna have to charge a lot more money for it because there's so much in there so yeah, that's why I like to keep my courses relatively short. And more insight on the process is where I'm at right now is I'm building it for the first time, right? So I'm gonna discover a lot of things as I build it for the first time. And then the second time I build it, so once I get it built for the first time, I'm gonna go back and build it again from scratch, but that's like the dress rehearsal. That's where like I figure out, okay, what order am I gonna teach things in? How does it flow? You know, how does it stay exciting? You know, because like I could start off building our model, setting up cloud kit. That's kind of a lot of the boring stuff though. And I don't want to start off the course with that. Like I'm probably going to start with like map kit and building like the UI because you know, that's the fun part of development, right? At least to me. So start off with the fun part, get you going, get some momentum going in the course and then shift a little bit to the maybe not so fun stuff of building your models uh, and then kind of tie it all together for the fun stuff. So I don't know, I just wanted to talk through that just to let you know, there's some thought that goes into like the, the student's path. And I do think there's a little bit of an art to building these courses so that they're good, right? Again, making sure it's not overwhelming and too much, but still enough to get good substance, you know? Taking thought into like, the path the student's gonna take and, and kind of their mindset while they're going through it and keeping them excited and engaged. So there's a lot of thought that like goes into this. Um, I don't know, just wanted to, to share that, but that's Dub Dub Grub. Uh, if you want a timeline, I think I said this last episode, I think my original hopeful release date was April 1st. Um, but I even think I said last episode, I was like, yeah, so knowing me, it'll probably be May 1st. So now I've already shifted it to May 1st. So now I'm going to say knowing me, it'll probably be like late May, but we're targeting May, early May. I don't want to give a specific date, but targeting early May for the actual uh, launch of this thing. Okay, so that about wraps it up for the content creation business part of the course coming out. Um, and again, I'm just pumping out videos, selling existing courses, again, not rocket science. Uh, so let's talk about consulting, because that's still going on with Aluna. Uh, and again, still hiring a senior iOS developer. Actually, immediately after recording this, I have to review a take-home project that one of them has submitted, so that'll be fun. Um, but again, my time with Aluna will end whenever we hire a senior developer. So that could be next month, that could be four months from now, like, I don't know, but it is a nice little paycheck, but I still get my benefits from them. So it's a nice, my shares are still vesting. So it's a nice little setup, um, but uh, yeah, I have no idea when that will end. And then Creator View, uh, nothing has gone on. So the very minimal update. However, Creator View is a good segue into like, the, where I'm at with this job stuff and kind of like how I want my business to go. Like who knows what's actually gonna happen, but in my, and Sean's like dream world, like this would be like the perfect scenario. So last year, my business pretty much broke down like this. It was like half YouTube content creation and half 
consulting, right? That roughly, you know, rough numbers. Um, and I said going into 2021 that I was completely not doing consulting, right? That was completely going away. And I wanted to replace that consulting income. Well, I knew I wasn't going to replace it because I was like well over six figures uh, with Creator View. So I knew this year was kind of be a little bit of a dip. But again, that was part of the what I wanted to do. I wanted to like take a shot on myself, take some time, build my own startup. So as of right now, the, the reason I said all that, my graph of income is just YouTube and courses. Like that's basically it. And I don't like not having like a diversified income. So in my perfect world, like what I would like to do and what I'm going to work towards for the end of 20, rest of 2021 is... I want Creator View to be the main thing. Like ideally, Creator View is my main source of income and then YouTube and courses is just a side thing. And a big reason for this shift is, you know, I don't want to alarm anyone, but like I'm kind of losing interest or passion for this development stuff. Um, not that it's going away completely. Let me, let me explain myself again. I don't want to like alarm people. So for the past few years, like development, learning about Swift and iOS has been like number one passion and that was it. Now it's like falling to number two behind like just like investing and, you know, business, that type of stuff. And I just want to be clear, like if you know my story, like I said, I went out to San Francisco in 2014 uh, to get involved in like angel investing, venture capital, just be in that world. Like I just, I've always been passionate about that. Becoming a developer was a complete unforeseen detour, was never even in the plans, right? So the fact that like business and investing is coming back up to the top, like that was kind of always like the natural like cycle of things. Cause I've always said like, yeah, I'm doing development now, but my end game is always back to like angel investing, that kind of stuff. So I think that's just kind of like starting to happen. So I don't want to say that like, I have no interest in development. That's not it at all. It's just it's number two now. It's not number one anymore. And that kind of brings me to what I want to do in 2021 and have Creator View, my, the indie app, and building the business around that. It's not so much the the development side of things in Creator View that I'm passionate about and, and I'm excited about. It's the the marketing side of things, the how do I how do I get users, the sales, the growth, the listening to features, the, the all the business side of building Creator View is what I can't wait to do. The development, I'm like, eh, it's a means to an end. Um, but so... That is kind of what I what I see the shift in my my business going forward. And you know, again, who knows if it's going to happen? That's my perfect world. But yeah, Creator View be the main thing. iOS Dev kind of be the uh, the side thing. Because again, it's not like I'm not interested. I want to be very very clear. It's just it, it it's dropped a bit. Um, so on that note, though, I am going to start a finance channel, uh, YouTube channel. Not like here's what stock to buy or here's how you should invest your money. Like not not doing all that, but just financial education. Because that's another thing like I'm passionate about and I have pretty good teaching skills, I, I believe. It may not be for everybody, but enough people like the way I explain things and teach things. And I just believe that a, a very baseline level of financial literacy, like I'm not saying you need to be a financial wizard, but there's just taking somebody from zero financial literacy to just the super basics, like finance and economics 101, like taking them to that is a life-changing skill. So that is kind of a new passion that I want to pursue. And it's not like, oh, that's my main YouTube channel. That's all I'm doing. It'll be something I do just once a week, just as like a creative outlet for that passion. And, you know, who knows in a year or two, like what that grows into, right? But it is another like diversified income stream because this is not why I'm doing it, by the way. But uh, the CPMs on finance channels are ridiculous. Like I make like nothing from AdSense from development videos, nothing. However, finance videos make a killing from AdSense. Again, not why I'm doing it, but it is also an interesting challenge because it's a completely different type of YouTube channel, not just topic, but YouTube strategy, right? The YouTube strategy for my iOS channel is search-based, right? How people find me is how to build a table view, you know, tell me about Codable, right? That's how they find me. It's heavily, heavily search-based. I don't rely on like suggested and, and getting in good with the YouTube algorithm. Like it, it's all search-based. So that is a very different strategy than the finance channel, which would be like algorithm-based and getting in suggested and all that stuff. So that's what I'm excited about too. One, the subject matter is something I'm passionate about and it's a, it's a mission. Um, but two, it's a completely different type of YouTube channel that I'm curious to see if I can pull off. So yeah, that's why I want to start in 2021, just that transition away from 100% courses to now there's some creator view mixed in there. There's some finance channel stuff mixed in there. And then hopefully by 2022 is when the iOS dev and courses is now like in third place, just being honest. That's kind of what I hope. Again, I'm not quitting it. It's a, one, I do enjoy it. I'm not gonna, again, it's not like I have no interest. It's just dropped a little bit. Uh, but two, it's just such a valuable skill. It'd be ashamed to like, let it go to waste, right? And I do, like once I get in the, in the mode of coding, like do, I enjoy it, I have fun. 
But uh, so yeah, that's kind of the, hopefully the next year or two path on the overall business. So if you are interested in the finance stuff, keep an eye out for that. That won't come out until after uh, the course though, because that's the, the primary focus. But why did I talk about all that? Well, one, I talk about my business on this show and that's why you listen if you're interested. But uh, two, that kind of ties into the job hunt verdict and kind of like why I made the decision I did, which I won't bury the lead, I won't spoil it. I'm continuing to do my own thing, which I said in the last episode was probably the most likely outcome because I have a, I have a great thing going. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bullshit anybody. Like it's a pretty good deal I got going on. So like to give that up, uh, you know, would take a lot in like the perfect scenario. But one main factor, and again, I, I put out the tweet that even started the whole like job. And again, I, I put hunt in air quotes. Like all I did was put out a tweet and whatever came into my DMs, I, I explored. <laughs> like I wasn't out there applying. I didn't do anything like that. But a big factor of that was like, again, on the tweet, like I was just kind of like bored, a little lonely. Again, spending a year in quarantine, like working on your own business by yourself, not much human interaction, like that'll weigh on anybody. So I kind of started feeling like I wanted to work on a team. But uh, at the end of February, I took a trip home for a little over a week, hung out with friends and family a lot. And that lifted that weight like dramatically. Like I really needed <laughs> that trip home and hanging out with like humans nonstop. Like that was, that was very good for me. So immediately after that trip, the desire to get a job and work on, you know, a team uh, definitely lowered a lot. So I kind of knew I was pretty much gonna do my own thing, but I still wanted to explore the opportunities because I was in the interview process. So my, my mindset after that trip home was like, you know what, go through the process, see if you get any offers and then make your decision, right? Um, but uh, so long story short, what happened with kind of the finance companies is I discovered through just many talks with them was, uh, you know, they're regulated by the SEC. So naturally there's restrictions on like what their employees can do with like investing. And you can invest in stocks, just, I have, I have big ideas. <laughs> so you couldn't do like, you know, some bigger stuff uh, with investing. That was restrictive. So I didn't like that. And then the idea for the YouTube channel came while I was uh, at home. So the finance YouTube channel, I should say. And obviously working for a SEC regulated finance company, finance YouTube channel is a giant no-no. So basically once I decided that I wanted to do that and pursue that passion, that basically wiped the finance companies uh, off the table for the job hunt stuff. So once they were off the table, that just left two companies that were kind of, uh, I was talking to. One was Netflix. The other one I won't say the name of because I'm gonna describe their take on project. And nobody knows I was interviewing with them. They were like kind of a late entrant into it. Um, and I have never mentioned them like on a video or podcast or anything like that. In fact, there's probably only two people that could potentially be watching this that even know I interviewed there. And um, that's because they work there. <laughs> so uh, so when I talk about their project, I'm not giving anything away. I'm not gonna like say exactly what the project was, just a, a brief overview of the topic. And the reason I'm gonna mention it is because it kicked my ass, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. And that was a new thing for me. Having a take on project kicked my ass. Uh, I was blindsided, not gonna lie. Um, and it wasn't something like, every iOS developer should know. It was a pretty niche thing. I and mean, it was like streaming real-time data, like not over a WebSocket, like through HTTP. There's a special URL session request that you can do, web stream request or something like that, or data stream request, something like that. Um, that turns out like I kind of, I went down a bunch of different paths before I got to that one. And after like emailing them, they said that was the right path. But by the time I found that path, that you are different URL session task, uh, I had like already like checked out to be honest with you. Um, and, and to be fair, like I said, I got my ass kicked. To be fair to myself, um, I, I don't wanna say I didn't try too hard. Like my mindset going in, and I'm being honest and hope the people that work there, if they're watching, they don't take offense to this. I don't mean it at all. But going into, going into the take home project, when I already knew in my mind that like, eh, I'm probably gonna do my own thing. I was like, you know what? If I can just knock out this take home project, no sweat. Yeah, I'll give it an hour or two, no problem. But once I started banging my head uh, against the wall and it, it kind of like stumping me, I was like, okay, if I know I'm not probably not gonna work there, um, I'm probably just wasting my time and theirs. So once it wasn't like an easy breeze through project that I could do quick and easy, that's kind of when I when I called it. So yeah, I wanted to share that little tidbit on me getting my ass kicked by, uh, <laughs> by a take home project because that blindsided me, that, that took me by surprise. Um, but I mean, I shouldn't be so harsh on myself. Like I, the effort was commiserate with the desire uh, to give up what I have right now, which is not not high. And that sums up the, the job thing in a nutshell, right? Like it would have taken a lot for me to give up what I have now. And again, the trip home, having that, I guess, loneliness and boredom lifted kind of really crystallized that I was like, no, why would you ever give this up? You have the, 
the just the ultimate freedom and you know i've always dreamed of having that now i have it so why would i why would i give that up so that's the verdict on the job uh hunt so that wraps it up for this episode of what i'm working on i probably won't release another one until i have some decent progress on creator view because basically i'm just going to be building the course and releasing that and you've already gotten a uh a good overview of what the course is going to be. Uh, so yeah, so I think the next episode might be a few weeks from now, three, four, five weeks, um, but it won't be until I have some good, interesting creator view progress to share. So we'll talk to you then.